Now, hoppers are very important in the fishing world, uh, especially in the lochs and the lakes here in the UK and Ireland. Uh, at the moment, black, olive, uh, probably the two most used at the moment. Uh, this is a basic olive hopper. It's more, when you look at these, more like you think it's more a wet, but if you basically use your floating, put it on this area here, and onto the, the seals for uh, it will sit subsurface, sit nice. Uh, the other sort of patterns uh, basically is to help that a wee bit, which is putting a wee bit of CDC and at this point, and that's the one I'm going to tie, so you can tie them without the CDC and with the CDC uh, two sizes, main sizes and uh, this is a, that's a 10 and this is the, the 12, the two, that's the two main sizes that I would tie uh, you want to be tying black, olive, two or three colours of olive uh, claret's a really good colour even orange, red, fiery brown cut these sort of colours all work now this is a, a good colour, especially this time of year. Now I'm using a chartreuse thread just to give a wee bit of fluorescence near the butt and in the head area so it just mixes well with the, uh, the fly itself. Now what I'm going to do, first thing hook, two choices, this is an all-purpose medium hook, this is a full and mill, it's a size 10, so I'm going to put a layer of thread down, now you can actually tie something the way down. This is the uni pearl, this one, number 14. Pearl's really good and a lot of the flies as well. So I take this, so it's midway between the point and the barb of the hook and then I'm going to come up to the point of the hook. This there is your first turn of the rib and it comes round and then onto your dubbin so it tapers up onto it. Now the dubbin here is a light olive and a medium olive blended together to show you the pack. It's just just a mix. I prefer to mix uh, dubbins to get colours or certain shades. Now I'm just going to lightly put this on. Slide it up. We can tighten up if we need to once we start to wind the dubbin on. We can stretch it out. There's a wee bit of orange, now you can use a, a light orange to a really warm orange or whatever. I'm going to use the, I've been tying some with a, well basically, this is a kind of sunburst, a dark sunburst. I'm going to tie some with the fluorescent orange as well. Now this is a good colour on its own, so is the sunburst, it's a really good colour on its own. Now before I do that I'm going to rub it, and now the best way, you can either rub it up the pearl, protect it with a fine wire, or what I like to do is just put some super glue on the underside, meaning the side it's going to touch the hook when you wind up. So there, turn or so at the back, and then come up through. It's going to do a full turn here, and then come over that. Turn that away. And you get my fluorescent orange. You don't need much of this. It's a tiny drop, just it's a wee highlight colour. When you see the olives, especially the midge coming off, the thorax area has a wee touch of orange and this just gives that impression, so don't go crazy. Take away the excess. Just running the thread through a wee bit there just to hold it in. It's fine. Now, legs, just three knotted pheasant tail legs, and a size 10 I'll put six on, and a size 12, four's plenty. Now, to put in, there we are. I'm just going to bring them straight out. I know very clever, some of them. Just count the tips. Obviously, make sure you've got six. Now, what I like to do is to run my fingers through, just to straighten out the legs. To get them set the way you want. Make sure there's six there. Yeah, the side, tear away. Length of the leg, it's up to yourself. I'm putting three down either side of the body. So I like it. So the, the basically if you imagine having a tail there, it would be the end of the tail. 
if you're fishing with international reels, you better make sure it's within that as well. That 15 sixteenths of an inch. Now that's not on too well, so I'm just going to go back. It's easy to go back. If you're not happy, just come in a couple of turns at this point, just to make sure I can get them to sit the way I want. So the leg here it's crisscrossed. I prefer to have them more on the side than on the top. Two or three times to tighten up. Now you can fold this back, tuck them back, and they will hold back, just obviously. Bring out the waist, just watch you don't cut away your, your main leg. See how they're sitting. Just going to fold these, just push, I usually push this forward and press it so that it encourages them to sit on the side. You want it leggy anyway, you don't want it to be too with thick or two sitting together. Now I've got a couple of, these are the small CDC feathers I keep. Uh, I've got two here, don't want too many. Just set them on the top. Uh, base it towards, you can have it within the body length. It'd be slightly longer. I'm putting it in line with the barb of the hook. So then we tighten up. It just helps to float the fly a wee tad. Trim that away. Now, Move it waxed, tidy that area up. You can see it just gives an impression of the wing, but it helps to actually float the fly. Maybe about a hackle. Now I've got a, this is just a light ginger cock neck uh, that I've got. You could use dyed, but the, the light ginger works extremely well with, with all of. You can catch this in. That way, got a wax on my thread, make sure it's not going to slip. Now, if I can find my hackle pliers, there we are. I'll wind it on with the hackle, hackle pliers so you can see. I'm just going to fold the bar like it was a wet, but basically, I'm going to fold the hackle as you can see, just with bring my fingers through and running it on that the stem. Now, I'll get a couple of flies from this, this feather, and I've enough there to tie another fly. So a couple of turns, I can then pull it back, it's a thin stem, so I can do that. And then I can trim away. Now you can finish off with that. But all I like to do is get some more of the olive dubbing. And then, just lightly on. I want it quite loose, like, I don't want it too tight. Just form like a, like a head, if you want to call it. It's quite like the dubbing, it's, and I'm using the thread, I'm winding through, tightening the thread up, or tightening up the dubbing, or winding the thread through it. I want it to sit a certain way, so I'll go back. I want it quite loose. But obviously, I don't want it to fall away. As I get near the eye here, I'm just going to stroke the seals far back, form a small head. The easiest way to varnish it is to Apply the varnish onto the thread and then put it finish. There we are. There you go, that's a, your olive hopper or F fly style. And uh, it's, it's a colour combination that you can't go far wrong with it. It sits. Now you remember when you're, as I say, making this float, if you wanted to float, you can fish it wet, subsurface. A lot of hoppers are fished like that, but if you it's soft enough that when that is on the surface film, you'll see there how it, it gives. You you put your floating on like this and rub it into your your wing and your legs. You can control it where it goes and where it sits. So anyway, that's your your olive hopper with the CDC wing.